time after time. What is up, y'all? It's Benjamin Cashwell here. If you don't know me, I'm a freshman at Sanderson High School, and I'm on the SALT leadership team here at E Street. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited, and I hope you are too, for some great music and a great sermon tonight. So uh, just remember, whether you're new here or whether you come every week, no one belongs here more than you. See you later.
What's up, E Street Youth? Welcome to Sunday Night Youth Group. We are so glad that you are here and you've enjoyed our welcome and our worship. Uh, we are so thrilled to be with you and that you have joined us, whether it's you by yourself in your room on your cell phone uh, or with your whole family or whether you're watching us live on uh, Sunday nights or on a Tuesday morning. However you have found us, we are so thankful that you are here. Uh, my name is Rush Beam, and I'm the director of youth ministries uh, here at Edenton Street at East Street Youth. And I am so thrilled that you are here. And I've got a word for us tonight, finishing in um, or continuing on in our series on what to do when you don't know what to do, which, if you're like me, is all the time. So, friends, uh, to, to come into this space uh, or to continue into this space, uh, let's just bow our heads and join in a word of prayer. So will you pray with me? Good and great God, we give you thanks uh, for this time. I give you thanks for each student who is watching this and participating in this, either by themselves or with their families. Lord, may tonight be a blessing to them. May your truth and your story found in Scripture uh, continue to give us fresh life. Continue to speak truth to us and give us freedom. Lord, we love you. We give you thanks. Amen. So, when you don't know how to do something, how to fix something, or how something works, what do you do? Ask a teacher? Ask your parents? Ask your friends? Ask someone you really know and trust? No! You go to the internet and ask some randos. But I'm not talking about creeps here. I hope. No! I mean the people of the internet! You know, those people who make how-to videos. Because chances are, if you're trying to figure out something, someone on the internet has already figured it out for you. Things like, how do I unsend a text? No. How do I do a winged eyeliner? How do I get rid of the zit? By Friday night. How do I get out of gym class? How do I screen cap Snapchat without getting caught? They'll never know. But then there are things in life that don't have an easy fix, that don't have a simple solution, that don't have a how-to video. Things like what to do when you have problems with family, or when it seems like you have no control in your life, or what to do when someone has done something to you. I mean, clearly, they gotta go. The truth is, there's a lot of life that doesn't have a solution you can just find online. So how do you know what to do when you don't know what to do? Friends, do you know what a back story is? I mean, say like, right, when you're watching a movie and and you, you know that those characters have had a life before the start story that you see is happening, right? You know that you are catching something in midstream. But sometimes we see these snapshots that happen during it that are, are the back story, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a snapshot, it's a little story uh, about sort of what was happening before the characters find themselves in the current story. And these things help give life to the current story, right? They make it more compelling. I mean, chances are you've maybe felt this in your own life, right? There are these moments in our real life, life stories, right? Maybe they won't make a movie out of us, but they make us ask these questions like, man, what is happening? What's the backstory that got me here? Or maybe you thought, hey, what's the point of what I'm going through right now. Is this leading to something? Because in a movie, right, they don't show us backstories that aren't important to the current story. Well, today in our uh, continued series, we are gonna talk about difficulties, pain, struggles, problems. The things that will be a part of our backstory one day. But perhaps for you, for me, they are things that are in our current story. Things we're in the middle of. So in the past few weeks, we've been talking about this question, what to do when you don't know what to do. And today we're talking about what to do when like, I don't know, maybe like people make fun of you. A friend dies. Your learning disability makes everything in school and especially virtually school way more difficult. In the middle of all this, your parents, are, their relationship is struggling or breaking apart. Maybe you are suffering with how to feel in this world and there's self-harm or an eating disorder. Maybe someone you love is sick and the diagnosis, diagnosis came in the middle of all of this. In other words, I mean, friends, like the heavy stuff of life, 
drama. Before we can maybe even ask the question like what to do when you don't know what to do, which is the name of this series, maybe you're stuck asking the question of like, but God, why? Why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening? Why? And just like a movie, the flashbacks, like the scene, it doesn't seem to make any sense to us in the moment. These difficulties can make us feel like all sorts of ways. Difficulties to us, oftentimes, right, they feel, they feel random. They feel pointless. And honestly, if you're like me, they feel unnecessary. Like, can we get past the drama and the pain and into the good stuff, please? I mean, we've all had an experience that hurts and it feels pointless in the moment. Whether it was not making a team or not getting the part in the musical, going through drama with friends or family, we've all asked ourselves, why? And oftentimes when we ask ourselves why, there is not a good answer. Not in the moment. And what's worse, honestly, right? Like <laughs> real life, like you and I have, unlike the movies, our difficult circumstances usually don't get like a pretty bow tied up at the end, right? It's not like the movie ends and we're like, ah, oh, I feel better now, right? They don't turn out always the way that we want them to. And so it can be really difficult to see, is there a point to what is going on? To find hope despite the hurt that we are currently in or to or to even find the determination to like keep going despite all the difficulties that we are feeling but when we find life confusing or difficult we can actually learn that there are things that we can do by looking at other people's stories other people's backstories other people's current realities to find out maybe how it would mean something to our lives and we as faithful Christians, we oftentimes do that by, uh, by following a story from Scripture and see how that can be with us. So this whole series long that we've been doing, Haley and I, has, has been all about the character of Joseph from the Old Testament. And we're going to continue on with the life of Joseph today. But just to catch you up, like if you haven't been following along, but feel free to check out our YouTube channel if you haven't. But there's this guy named Joseph, right? And he was sold into slavery by his own brothers, sucks, right? He was then taken to a foreign country, which is Egypt, and he was forced to work slavery, right, for a high-powered official. He was then falsely accused, Haley talked about this last week, of doing something that he didn't even do. And because of that, he was thrown in to prison. So a free man to a slave to a prisoner, right? So if anybody has like, like that chance to complain, it's Joseph, maybe even more so than us. And right here in this moment of the story is where we pick up the scripture for today. So let's check it out. And this comes from Genesis chapter 40. It says, Sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, they somehow offended their master, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officials. And the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, he was mad at them and put them into custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the same prison where Joseph was confined. So, all right, listen, Pharaoh was the boss of Egypt. It's different than our sort of current judicial system. But like, if you, if you pissed him off, boom, you could go straight to jail. You didn't even have to do anything illegal. All right, let's pick up back up the story. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, they had a dream on the same night. And each dream had a meaning of its own. And when Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. And so he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why do you look so sad today? Well, we both had dreams, they answered, but there was no one to interpret them. I mean, to like explain them. And then Joseph said, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. Now, you may have a little bit of memory from the rest of this where like Joseph could like have some dreams, right, about his future, about other people's future. This had gotten him into trouble in the past. But if you want to read the whole story, please do. Oh, my gosh. But I'm going to summarize some other things for you because there's a lot happening. But Joseph is in prison for a thing that he did not do. Joseph told them their dreams. And with God's help, Joseph was able to tell them what they meant. And then Joseph said what would happen. And then, folks, it really happened. 
And based on the dream of the chief, the chief cup bearer, he just like brought drinks to the Pharaoh, right? He said that he would be restored to this favorable position. And he was. Now, for the chief baker, Joseph uh, said that the dream was not so good, not great. And that also happened. Things did not go well for the chief baker. Now, you would think maybe the cupbearer got back to Pharaoh, was like, yo, Pharaoh, this all happened. I know I was upset. You were upset with me. It's fine. But I met this guy, Joseph. He interprets dreams. You should meet him. He's super awesome. But that did not happen. What happened instead is that mm, he forgot Joseph, just straight up forgot him. He's left in jail. And here's where we pick up the story a little bit. Two years later, Pharaoh had a dream that troubled him. And he desperately searched for someone on his staff who could interpret them, but no one could. And that, two years later, is when the cupbearer remembered Joseph. So Pharaoh called for Joseph, who interpreted the dream and was incredibly accurate, right? And as a result, eventually Joseph was made second in charge of all of Egypt. If you can interpret dreams, you can like interpret things, people will like you, <laughs> right? This is what the, this one, I think, thing that comes from this story. And under Joseph's leadership that eventually came with his power that he had, Egypt survived a terrible famine, which eventually put Egypt in position to save these people called Joseph's own relatives and other people from his homeland. But here's where I want us to look at. It was two full years that Joseph continued to just be in jail before anybody remembered him or his gifts. And even when Joseph was promoted to a position of incredible power, second in command, right? He was still living in a foreign land. He was still under the Pharaoh. He was under the command of the Pharaoh, which meant that if he was, Pharaoh was having a bad day, Joseph could go right back to jail. He was still under the power. He was still a slave in a foreign land. But when we see like further later on the backstory and the context that happened, right? We can see that Joseph's challenging circumstances uniquely positioned him to do something great. Something that only he could do. And the same is true for you and me. Hard things might happen in our life. And it's important to remember right here before I go any further, that just because something happens doesn't mean that it was something God did to you or wanted for you. Because of our broken world, things happen that aren't fair, that suck, and that hurt, that don't make sense. People hurt one another and they create systems of hurt. But when it seems like it's impossible for anything good to come out of these crappy situations, remember that God is good at doing the impossible. Here's a verse from Romans that I think fits right now. And, and here it is. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now, it may not seem to make things in the moment like better, like at all. And it may not even make sense yet, right? But God is in the business of taking our hurt, our difficulties, our pain, and redeeming them. That means that even if there is like evil done in the world, that if, if things are meant for evil towards us, that God can use it and turn it for good. Not only for our others, but for, for excuse me, not only for ourselves, but for others and others in the world. Because friends, when you don't know what to do, remember that your problems can position you for a purpose. Now, a purpose doesn't mean that we're going to have a pretty bow tied on every bad thing that happens. It doesn't mean that everything will be fixed and go back to how it was before. It just means that we, in the midst of pain, can leave room for God to tell a new story through us, even in the midst of our bad circumstances. It means that we can have confidence in God's ability to redeem things, not our own to make sense of them, but to know that God can come and turn bad into good. It means that the bad stuff doesn't get the last word. The hardest and worst things we experience, they aren't the end of your story and they're not the end of mine. 
So when we go through pain and we can't see the purpose yet, here are some things that I think that we can do to help us like get a bigger perspective. First of all, I want you to know, friends, no one has your life. Whatever circumstances you're going through, no one else is going through them. No one else is going to have the life story that you are going to have. And that may well give you a perspective later in life as that becomes a part of your backstory to position you for some purpose in the world. I went through some hard times at a time and youth ministry in a lot of ways was a place that I could go to when I was in middle school and high school to help make sense of and honestly just get cared for and, and be loved. And in some ways what I'm doing with my life is like me trying to make sense of the world and say thank you to the people that loved me like 20, 25 years ago. And just hope that I could do that. Heck, maybe not even for all of you, but honestly, maybe even just for one of you. Friends, maybe you could be a person who, who sees other per people's struggles and say, hey, wait, you feel that too? I don't feel the exact same thing, but I could walk beside you through the mists of this. It's why we put us in discovery pairings and put you with small group leaders and put you with your peers so that maybe, just maybe, there could be an adult or a peer or somebody in this church that we are doing community together, that you don't have to go through this hard circumstance alone. I'm not trying to use your bad circumstance for somebody else's good. I'm not, I don't want to use and abuse us that way. I'm just saying that our bad could be made and redeemed by God to help the world. Joseph went through pain that perhaps felt pointless, and we do too. But when we see his backstory, we see that God used his problems and positioned him for a purpose. God took his impossibly bad situation and used it to create unimaginable good down the road. And for him, it was like way down the road. Friends, remember here, God didn't cause the bad. God is certainly just seeing the bad and he's turning it into good. And this is redemption. We'll talk more about that next week with Haley. But for now, imagine if and how God could do the same for you. What if God is using a painful situation that you're in the midst of right now and has a dream and a vision for how that could be redeemed? How could you pay attention to what you're going through right now? Position and posture yourself towards God and say, God, for now that I'm in it, just be with me. Help me see it and feel it and know it. If it's really awful, God, be with me and help me get the heck out of it. That maybe you as a student need to ask for the help to get out. But maybe you're in that place that's a little bit after. And you could start to talk to mentors or friends or God to say, help me make sense of it. Friends, I'm thankful that you're here with us. I want you to know that we have dreams and hopes for the future and how we'll be together and how our holy friendships can make us more whole. Friends, thanks for joining us tonight. God bless. What's up, friends? I'm Adria, I'm a senior on salt, and tonight I have some announcements. The first announcement is that community groups are Wednesday night at 7, unless you're a 7th grade guy, 8th grade guy, or 12th grade girl. You guys meet Sunday, also at 7 p.m. Those links are in the Instagram bio or in the newsletter. Either way, you get your information. And announcement number two is that last week, registration for Discovery went live. Discovery is going to look a lot different this year, but it's still going to be super, super fun. And we're hopeful that you and your family and your friends will join us. It's going to be really special. We're really looking forward to it. But make sure that before you register, watch the little video that Rush posted on Instagram. Um, and registration for that is also in the newsletter and the Instagram bio. What's up, E Street? Thank you so much for joining us for Youth Group tonight. I wanted to take a moment to remind you about these awesome cards that our church has put out for the season of Lent. Each week, we're focusing and centering on a different thing, and this week, we are focusing on our bodies. Uh, this card has a bunch of great information. You can find it in our newsletter or in our Instagram bio, but I want to focus on what it says up at the top. 
It says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So I want to challenge you this week that every single time you see yourself, whether it's in a reflection of a window or in a mirror or on Snapchat or wherever it is, I want you to repeat that refrain to yourself. I want you to say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's my challenge for you. I hope you'll do it. And we'll see you next time.